sophisticated. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them down. That's right. Yeah. Pro bono publico. Lady Ramkin's bosom rose and fell like an empire. She reached out and grabbed the dunging fork from its hook on the wall. One step nearer, I warn you, and you'll be sorry, she said. The leader looked beyond her to the frantic dragons. Yeah, said Master And what'll you do, eh? Her mouth opened and shut once or twice. I shall summon the watch, she said at last. The threat did not have the effect she had expected. Lady Ramkin had never paid much attention to those bits of the city that didn't have scales on. Well, that's too bad, said the leader. That's really worrying, you know that? Makes me go all weak at the knees, that does. He extracted a lengthy cleaver from his belt. And now you just stand aside, lady, because... A streak of green fire blasted out of the back of the shed, passed a foot over the heads of the mob, and burned a charred rosette in the woodwork over the door. Then came a voice that was a honey purr of sheer deadly menace. This is Lord Mountjoy Quickback Winter Force the Fourth, the hottest dragon in the city. It could burn your head clean off. Captain Grimes leaped forward from the shadows. A small and extreme trunk of golden dragon was clamped firmly under one arm. His other hand held it by the tail. Grimes was watching. Now, I know what you're thinking. Vines went on somewhere. You're wondering, after all this excitement, has it got enough flame yet? And you know, I ain't so sure. He leaned forward.